hi you guys welcome back to my channel this is your girl um so today is gonna be sunday school sunday and the sunday school lesson is lessons three like i told y'all before i wanted to catch y'all up with me because i was a little behind because i had started late with doing the, the sunday school um so hopefully you can forgive me for that i could try my best to like record some stuff like prior to that one it's just <laughs> yeah it's a lot going on but y'all forgive me now this one is going to be the promise of obedience y'all so i was looking at throughout the book and um technically everything is about obedience so this whole semester or season of this fall sunday school book is about obedience and we all know that the bible says that obedience is better than a sacrifice um so with that being said if he's telling you obedience is better than a sacrifice then you already know the funny thing about that is obedience and sacrifice are equal you know what i'm saying because when you're obedient you're sacrificing your uh pride you're sacrificing what you want to do to be obedient because a lot of times being obedient is not something that we actually want to do all the time but obedience is sacrificing yourself to be obedient to god okay and so here we are in um scriptures we're in the the book of exodus okay 19 1 through 6 24 3 and 8 now i also have other scriptures that go with that and i've already had it marked in my book i was thinking about like just using this book for like sunday school things and like showing y'all where certain scriptures are because this book doesn't have a lot of writing in it and i don't want to distract you now a lot of my bibles i write put notes but i find it is distracting to move a sticky note when i go back and read something so i'm probably gonna designate one bible to have all these sticky notes and everything in it i'm gonna try i'm gonna try but it's real hard because all my bibles have like so much to give so much to say so yeah so we're gonna read scripture 19 scripture exodus 19 and 1 in the third month when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness. And there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called out unto him, out of the mountain saying thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself y'all hold on my kids okay wow. sorry about that you guys I'm a mama yeah so now we're gonna keep reading and it says number five now therefore if you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine now i had wrote me some little in things brackets around it because peculiar usually means strange or odd or unusual um in the world people say well, she's very peculiar she's different she's abnormal people not used to that but it's just amazing to see that god told them that they would be peculiar now i did do a video the other day to set show about how people want to be included instead of excluded in God is telling us right now that we will be excluded. We will be different. We will be like a treasure, something not like the other jewels in the treasure box. Just like a diamond is different. Just like a sapphire is different. Just like a ruby is different. It's just different, but it all has a certain purpose that I want to use it for. So if God is telling us that peculiar is such a great thing, what makes you think I want to be included with y'all? okay whatever so we're gonna move past that i just want to let that be out there because i'm a very different person i never <laughs> i've always been different let's just say that um and it says and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of israel and moses came and told the people of all the words and all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which the lord hath said we will do and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an, builded an altar under the hill and the twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of the oxen unto the Lord. But they not only did peace offerings but they also did burnt offerings. So they did too. Okay. 
And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. He took the book out of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the um, blood of the covenant, which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Okay. Now it's some other stuff that go along and you guys should really go get you a Sunday school. If you don't go to Sunday school at church, you should really go get you one, get your own like Sunday school book, because it is really like interesting to read this and the information they give you. When I was growing up, that's a lot of things that I learned from the Bible was from Sunday school. And it just so happened that my mom was a Sunday school teacher as well. She was actually like the superintendent, but she was so knowledgeable back then. I promise to you, my mama she was something else in her 30s and so on she was something else oh my gosh she just really knew the word and then the sunday school teachers that i had she was bomb too <laughs> like i just loved everything about them and what they presented they were strong women and they just knew the word and it was just an inspiring situation with that being said um there's other books that correlate with this and i'm gonna go um up at the top okay pull the first one and this one is in i believe deuteronomy now we're in exodus but deuteronomy is where it is and it's in the chapter four verses let's see verses two through eleven now there's some that i like underline with a pencil and this is two do not add or subtract from these commandments i'm giving you just obey the commands of the lord your god i'm giving you do not add what you want to add okay do not take away what you want to take away hence people that saying when, when the bible was wrote in 1868 and didn't have this in it this one was around 1996 i'm sick of it yeah that's all i gotta say about that and then we're in um six obey them completely and you display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations so our intelligence and wisdom like i always say you know people say well i've been on the earth a little bit longer than you i think i have some wisdom well the bible says right here that basically wisdom comes from the lord it's a gift and um if you stand his word and is in it and is obedient to him you will gain knowledge and wisdom that the people around you can't say nothing to you because you know what you know. Second Timothy, I want to say 2 and 15, study to show thyself approve, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so when you study and you show thyself approve, when you're studying God, because that's what it is, you're studying God. When you read your word, they say the word is God and God is the word. You're studying God, you're communicating with him, you're getting to know him. So when you do that, there's nothing anybody can say to stop what you know for real. And I'm not talking people that had their own commentary because technically we all have our own commentary when we're talking about the Bible. But I'm talking about people who read the Bible and say it is it is what it is, whether we want to like it or not. Okay, and then we're going to go on to um chapter, I mean, verse 8. And it says, and what great nation has decrees and regulations as righteous and fair as the body of instructions that I'm giving you today? That's funny I said it because I remember when I was reading this, I felt like, this is so true. A lot of people like, what I want to do a Christian for? All I do is tell you, don't do this, don't do that. But when I think about the commandments that God has given us, they are all things to help us, to help our temple, to help our mental and our spiritual man, and even our flesh. Because a lot of times, if we don't dip in certain situations, we won't have the problems that we have. If we weren't fornicating, it wouldn't be things around here where we having kids out of wedlock. We having churn with this man and that man. If we wasn't doing this stuff, it wouldn't happen. And that's just the honest truth. If we wasn't lying, because some people's like, I was married when I had my kids and he still left me. But if he wasn't a liar, you know, if he wasn't a liar, she wasn't a liar. If she wasn't an adulterer, okay, this stuff would not be happening, okay. So we're gonna go into this, um second part oh it must be on two <laughs> and so then this one is going to be chapter five i believe yeah chapter five 22 through 29 i did not highlight anything but i will say this it says now this was interesting it said he spoke with a loud voice from the heart of the fire surrounding surrounded by clouds and deep darkness this was all he said at the time and he wrote his words on two stones and gave them to me 
What's interesting to me is when people tell the children about the Ten Commandments, nobody tells us how big or how high the darn fire or the flames was. They make it look real cute. But they never tell us how it was like scary if you think about it. Like the flames was up high. It was darkness, <laughs> deep darkness by the clouds. Y'all know where the clouds at? Okay, deep darkness in the clouds. And not only that, I'm, I'm just being completely honest and transparent. I never knew that God literally gave him the two tablets. I'm thinking that God told him what to write and it was wrote, it was wrote down. Now, if I'm reading it wrong, God, please, you convict me and you tell me where to go with this. But what I read was, this was all he said at the time. And he wrote his words on two stones and gave them to me. This is Moses talking about what the Lord did. I'm sorry. I, okay. That's that. And so then we're going to go to the second one. Chapter 7. The privilege of holiness. Okay. For you are holy. Chapter 7 verse 6. You are holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on earth, the Lord God has chosen you to be his own special treasure. That's the peculiar part that I was telling you about. But in this book, which is um the NLT, it says to be his own special treasure. Okay. The Lord did not set his heart on you and choose you because you were numerous than other nations. For you were the smallest of all nations. Mm. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you and he was keeping with such a... He was keeping the oath that he had sworn to your ancestors. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from slavery, from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay. With all that being done, y'all, and y'all seeing what he did to the people. Now, but you got to see both hand, both situations. See what he did to Pharaoh for disobeying him. See what he did to the people who obeyed him and did what he said and had faith in him, what he did for them. Those things are miraculous, supernatural things that don't happen naturally. It's not something that happens when we're walking on the street. You don't see people um, with men are coming from the sky. You don't see that. You don't see the uh, big old cloud leading you to your, your job. You don't see that. You don't see people walking no more either. Well, you do see some, but you get what I'm saying. They walked everywhere. <laughs> they walked Texas, okay? With that being said, we're going to go to the last um, scripture. Uh, is it one? I thought I could have promised it was one more. I will look that up. Okay, so this one is in Deuteronomy 12. A call to love of obedience. Okay, and I I, sir, I highlighted this. Not highlighted, but I underlined this. He, I hope y'all can see. It says, 19 so you too must show love to foreigners now it says 18 he ensures that orphans and widows receive justice he shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing so i, I underline so you too must show love to foreigners for you yourself were once foreigners in the land of egypt you must fear the lord your god and worship him and cling to him your oaths must be in his name alone now i know people say we're not an old um covenant anymore and i understand that but i just feel like when god tells us stuff he don't tell us that just to say oh that's for the old stuff he just like he was telling moses them look what i did just like he told joshua look what i did with moses pay attention to that because that is a it's a way of giving you like a road map you know what i'm saying to let you know who i am visually because god is so great that he teaches things visually audially up uh, with well, audio and and in words you know like people are different learners i'm a more visual person but obviously they they needed to see some things and he let them see some things us in this new generation we're, we're we always want to sign that's what they say we always want to sign my goodness gracious goliath why can't you just listen to the word of god haven't i given enough signs with that being said um let me look because i thought it was one more scripture In Hebrews, it was here we go. Oh, oh it was one in Isaiah too. I'm sorry, and it says praise for deliverance. This is verse chapter sixty three, verse seven. I will tell the Lord, un tell the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all He has done. I will rejoice in His great goodness to Israel. 
which is he has granted according to his mercy and love. And he said, they are my very own people. Surely they will not betray me again. And he became their savior and all their suffering he also suffered. And he personally rescued them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them through all the years. But they rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and fought against them. Wow. Then they remember those days of uh, those days of old when Moses led his people out of Egypt. So people, um, this is a prayer and a praise for deliverance. For the people to stop grieving God. All he's done for you. And sometimes we just return to wicked ways. And then when things get bad. Things get bad. We ready to call on God. But God is always going to be there. Just like a parent. Always going to be there when you need him. Yeah. Now this is. Oh wait. Uh -uh, that's not it. Here we go. Hebrews. Um, chapter 9. Verse 19. For after Moses had read each of God's commandments to all the people, he took blood of calves and goats along with water and sprinkled both the book of God's law and all the people using hyssop branches and scarlet wool. Then he said, this blood confirms the covenant God has made with you. And in the same way, he sprinkled blood on the tabernacle and everything used for worship. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That, if this ain't telling you about Jesus, I don't know what to tell you. Without the shedding of blood, y'all. And this is in the book of Hebrews. This is way back. You know, you know what I'm saying? This is in the New Testament. This is in the New Testament. And it's going back to the times of Moses, like I just said. Like, we can act like the Old Testament doesn't matter. But that's just not true. What kind of God do you think we serve? What kind of God do you think we serve that just gives us anything for no reason? Come on, y'all. Come on. He just, wow. And so we're going to answer some questions in the Sunday school lesson. Hopefully you guys can answer them. Um, it says, how old was Moses when he began to work of delivering Israel from out of bondage? And I should have highlighted where these answers were. Because they're in the book of Exodus 19 and 1. said Moses was 80 years old by the time he had been a shepherd for his father-in-law. He had come out the wilderness as a fugitive from Egypt. Then Egypt, Egyptian justice. And God had used those four decades, decades to mature him. At the burning bush, God called him to go back to Egypt and lead his country men out of bondage. God had sent 10 devastating plagues. Okay, so 80 or 80, 90, 110, 120. No, because he died at 120. Moses died at 120, so he was 80. Okay. Why was Sinai Desert familiar to Moses? Well, it just said it. He had lived there with his father-in-law being a shepherd. So he was familiar with it, but the Egyptians were not when they came. But God was preparing him like he always do. Three, where was Mount Sinai located on the Sinai Peninsula? It was at the foot of Mount Sinai. If I'm correct. I see. Yep. Um, a full account is given in 17, 8 through 16. This is Exodus. Moses led Israel from Rahadam to the desert of, of or wilderness of Sinai. Camp was made at the foot of Mount Sinai. Okay. To what did God compare himself in caring for young Israel? That's the one I did not get the answer. What synonym might be used for peculiar when referring to God's people? Treasure special. What kind of government did God propose propose for Israel? He wanted a theoretic monarchy. Um, I looked that up, and it's basically getting all of like a kingdom that is set on God, like just God alone, getting answers and everything from God. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing from other kings or anything like that. It is um it's the king ruled by a mandate from the gods, government by divine guidance. That's how they would say it, it is, you know. How did the Israelites react to God's covenant requirements? They were happy. They were obedient to it. They said they were okay. How did Moses use stones to set up a dedication? He used twelve for the twelve tribes. 
um basic symbolic what two kinds of sacrifices were offered to god like i said burnt and peace offering and how did moses use blood in the dedication ceremony um on the altar stone then he put some on the people of israel yep and you guys that is it because this this video again oh i talk too much <laughs> y'all have a blessed day keep god first i love y'all so much thank you for the new subscribers i'm trying to get to a thousand people if i get to a thousand people i'm gonna do a giveaway i am i really am i don't know what i'm gonna give away but i love giving gifts it's something that's so fun to me but you guys have a blessed day bye bye